Well, I'm happy to welcome today John Hossie, our horticulture extension educator for Rogers County. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. I'm really excited to learn about your simple irrigation audit for homeowners. Tell me a little bit about right. this project. Okay, well, this was started as a research project, and uh, we're, I'll tell you a little more later about how it, how it came about and everything, mm -hmm. but it's a simple irrigation audit. Uh, kind of like the simple irrigation plan that they have uh, for, for homeowners. Six, yeah. Right. Uh, but we're trying to find out how much water is actually output, you know, into the lawn area or a landscape area on a timing uh, mechanism. Um, and that way we can learn how to conserve water uh, mm -hmm. better and learn that there, you don't really need as much water on your turf as what people think. Okay. And just by doing that, they, they learn quite a bit. Yeah, and it's a real simple way to visually see right. how the water's being distributed. Exactly. Now, this is part of a, a grant? Yes, it's this? part of the, it's, the acronym is O-W-R-R-I, but that's Oklahoma Water Research, uh, Resource Research Institute. Okay. And uh, it's part of a uh, grant that was given to the Horticulture and Landscape Architecture Department here at Oklahoma State. And mm -hmm. I'm doing my thesis on this part here. Excellent. So, well, do you want to take a look at how this works? For sure. Us? Okay. Okay. So I see you've set several cups out throughout the turf area. Right. Mm -hmm. And the way I did this is we tried to, like I said, make it simple. And I'm working with Dr. Justin Moss, who's in the uh, landscape here architecture. You. Yes. Mm -hmm. And. Um, we decided just to do a three by three grid. Okay. And I just, instead of having to measure everything out, I just took three big steps and made a three by three grid. And that works. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is we'll water the turf. And the way I taught the master gardeners uh, when I were, was doing the classes with them is to water 20 minutes on either side. So you would get head to head coverage like mm -hmm. you were having a like if you had like a, a pop-up system. system, right? So you would water here for 20 minutes and then move the sprinkler over to the other side. Right. That and way they get cut. Exactly. Covered. And okay. then what? Then what? The idea was is that you you can either measure them here or you could put them all together and measure them and then divide. You know, there's a little bit of math to yeah. it. Yeah. We're trying to make it simple again, but you would divide all these by nine mm -hmm. to get your average. And, and then you have to multiply times three because you're 20 minutes, you know, it takes three of those to get an hour. So okay. then you learn your output per hour. Per, okay, how much water per hour. Right. And by distributing the cups throughout the area, you could see if it's getting even coverage. Exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah, very important because of the windy days and, you know. Uh, very true. Right. I assume different sprinklers have different uh, coverage as well. Have you found Very that much certain so. types are more even than yes, others? Yes, the, mm -hmm. the rotary type or the impulse type mm -hmm. usually is the most efficient. Okay. And probably the least efficient is the old timey, you know, oscillating, oscillating. kind. Because okay. it, it seems to put more water at this end and then at that end, mm -hmm. you know, if you're doing like then the in full the thing. Okay. Right. Very right. good, very good. Now you mentioned you've done some education classes with Master Gardeners on yes. this. Tell yeah. me a little about that. Okay. 20 to 25 uh, master gardeners in three counties, which was Rogers, Tulsa, and then Oklahoma County. And we had a, a lecture or a, a workshop on it where I kind of explained, you know, why we're doing this and the good and the bad and all that and, and why it's so important to learn. And then I sent them out on their own with the cups and they did all these in their own lawns and then emailed me the results. So now I'm interpreting that data Okay. And uh, it was really neat to see because I also was able to look at their comments and everything mm -hmm. about what they learned. And a lot, what was uh, amazing was several of them said that even their automated systems weren't, you know. Uh, oh, they didn't have as even Yeah, they weren't having they as thought. even coverage as they thought. That's really interesting. So, now, John, if a homeowner wanted to do this uh, audit at home in their own landscape, they don't necessarily have to have this plastic cup, right? Exactly, <laughs> right. Those are the professional use type. Okay. You could get something uh, inexpensive that you've already used, mm -hmm. like a tuna can, or in this case, a cat for probably a spoiled cat in someone's <laughs> house. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
these are great to measure with. Uh, you just put them out in the same kind of grid, and we measured this earlier in the lab, and uh, uh, about an inch of water comes almost up to the top. It's, it's uh, you know, it's a little confusing, but if you'll just pour that into like a rain gauge or something, you'll get the exact okay. amount that you need. Because it's based on the area. Right, right. Well, let's look at the distribution here. We've okay. only run our sprinkler from one side. Right. So I'm assuming we're not going to have an even distribution <laughs> exactly. out here. So let's grab that middle okay. one and compare maybe to the edge. All right. Yeah, as you that. can see, there's probably a little more than double in the middle mm -hmm. than the one on the edge. And of course, this is on the southwest end you know, so that the, the, wind. the prevailing winds is mm -hmm. keeping that from being, keeping it from uh, being uh, distributed well. And cause sometimes it's the sprinkler itself that, that can happen. So having it on the other side and doing it again, you know, helps uh, make the results not come out the way you want, but I mean, it helps it, it be even more even. Coverage. So that's the importance. Right. That's a great example of that, the importance of head-to-head yeah. -head coverage. Yeah. What are some of the other big lessons that you see from this? So we've learned head-to-head -head coverage. What are right. some of the results from your well, gardeners? Well, kind of in the big picture is what, and what we're, it's end up showing actually with the results is that, you know, we don't have to water near as much as we think we do. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, especially with an in-ground system, mm -hmm. people water their turf way too much. And you know, all the research that's been going on with turf and trying to get something that's more drought tolerant. I mean, a lot of the Bermuda turf is. What are some of the uh, goals? What do you hope to see uh, results from this study? Well, and that there again, that's kind of what is stated on my thesis too, <laughs> is that the, what is the goal? And the overall goal is uh, teaching and hopefully getting a behavior change of, of basic water conservation and that you know water is a precious resource and we can you know all do our part to to cut down on the overuse of it well, that'll be more and more important as the price of water increases exactly yeah. yes well, i think it's wonderful that you've been working with master gardeners who could go out and share what they've learned with the right. people in their community right yeah. thank you so much okay well thank you for for having me <laughs>